Ooh, welcome back guys, Mr. Rawlings here. So it's time for a little news rant, isn't it? Because it's Friday and on Fridays I try and do a little bit of a news rant, don't I? Yes I do, yes that's true. Now first of all I thought I'd just remind you in case you hadn't seen already about the uh, Nintendo Classic Mini, Nintendo Mini Classic. What is it called? Nintendo Mini Classic. Yes, I think that's what it's called. Probably should know what it's called first, shouldn't I, before I start talking about it. So the Nintendo Classic Mini, which is basically the NES, but in, you know, hand size, uh, is coming out on 11th of November. You can pre-order it now. I've pre-ordered it straight from, I think I use Game actually. You can pre-order it from Nintendo.co.uk or .com, presumably if you're in the US or some other place in the US. Basically you search for it, you should be able to pre-order it. Now, it seems like it's limited to one per customer, so if you wanted several for unknown reasons, I guess you'd have to make multiple accounts. And you can also get an extra controller. It does come with one controller, but you can get an extra one. It was like £8, so I guess it's going to be like $10 or something like that. And it's cool because it looks like the old retro NES you know, controller, and you'll also be pleased to know if you do have a Wii or a Wii U, or is it a Wii U? I'm not sure, I don't have either. I used to have a Wii, but don't... <laughs> sometimes I have a Wii, usually at night. Uh, no, sorry. Um, it's got the the ports on which fit, you know, your your Wii. So yeah, so if you've got you know the virtual console on your Wii with the old style games, you can now plug in the proper NES controller and play them like that. And equally, if you've got the Wii Classic controller, you can plug that into your little NES, you know, the Mini Classic thing as well. So it works both ways. It's Classic Mini. I keep saying Mini Classic, which doesn't even make any sense. I don't know why I'm struggling so much with that. Yeah, it comes with. 30 games preloaded and it saves automatically but also you can save it at certain points or whenever you want presumably, you know, perhaps it's that way. Um, so you don't have to worry about if you turn it off, you won't lose progress, anything like that. Uh, so that's pretty neat. And some of the games on it are pretty good. You know, there's, it's got a, you know, it's got a bit of filler, uh, admittedly, but some of them are pretty good. And what's really, really good, what's really interested me in, in it is the fact that it uses HDMI. So you can play it on your big TV, and also, I've not obviously had a chance to test it because I've not got it, but it may well work through the Elgato. Now the Elgato is a capture card, and that's how I capture my PS4 gameplay, so I might be able to capture some NES gameplay, and I've got a spare controller, so maybe even some two-player stuff, might be able to make some videos on it. Even if I can't, it's going to be pretty cool to play. Um, it's got a mode where it can display as 4x3, so you know your old TV style, CRT style, but at the resolution of your TV, so a good resolution, you know, like 1080p. So it'll be, you know, it'll be squashed to the middle, but a good resolution. It's also got, uh, I think, like a pixel perfect resolution or something like that. And I think it's even got the old style CRT resolution style, which probably would look terrible unless you're playing it on a CRT. Um, because unfortunately, the old games and, you know, the previous retro consoles, that kind of stuff, they do look best on CRTs. You know, they don't look very good on flat screens, but it sounds like they've tackled that here, so I'll be interested to see how good it looks on a big, you know, widescreen TV. So yeah, in time for the holidays, um, if you're interested in that, check it out, like I say. I've pre-ordered mine, so I'll probably show you when I get it, and yeah, looks pretty good. Over next, I thought I'd talk about the shit gadget of the week. Now, I have to be fair, this gadget isn't actually that bad in terms of what it does, and it's even designed fairly well. But the reason why it's a shit gadget of the week is because it just looks ridiculous. It really is just stupid. So it's called Toka Flash Wearable Flash Drive. And it's data management um, on the go. It's, <laughs> it's a belt buckle. What? I'm sorry, but I just can't get past that. No matter how good it may be, no matter how you know, effective it might be at data storage and data upload because it can link wirelessly to your iDevice or, or probably Android as well. I don't care about any of that, it just sounds bad, it just looks bad, doesn't it? Like, what were they thinking? And also I can see people forgetting it now, whereas before, say you were going out and you're a photographer and you're taking your camera and certain lenses and some lighting and you also needed your USB, you know, drive or some extra little SD cards or whatever, You'd know that and you would plan efficiently and you'd pack all those things before you left. Whereas now you're like, oh well, now I've got my uh, belt buckle which does the data side of things. 
But then if you forget to put your belt on those trousers, you'll just be thinking you've already got it and you don't need to pack that anymore. You're in that mindset of, I've always got it. Or if, if say, you put on a different pair of trousers that day, you're not going to have it. Or say you forgot to take your belt off when you put your trousers in the wash, and it ruins it all and you lose all your data forever. Like, it's not handy really, is it, in that respect? And of course they've got this image of this girl, you know, with her body showing because, you know, hot girls like that will definitely wear this belt buckle, won't they? And that will make people click on it. Uh... <laughs> I like some of the tears they've got as well because they've got... <laughs> <laughs> They've got a five dollar donation you can do, and you just get a thanks for that. Thanks. Why would you donate and not want to have the item? It doesn't make any sense. And interestingly enough, there's no claims of that particular tier, and there's also twelve dollars, and that's another thank you. It seems like you have to spend at least hundred twenty dollars if you actually want to get one of these monstrosities. Like I say, I can't be too harsh because it is quite clever and it probably does work quite well. I've, I've not seen it work, but you know, it probably does work. But at the end of the day, are you really, really going to wear a data storage device on your belt? That's what you need to ask yourself. Okay, not are you? It just sounds so nerdy, it's unbelievable. And then I thought I'd talk about the uh, DC series uh, on TV, and that is, of course. Arrow, and that was the first one, and The Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, and even Supergirl, because you may remember, or may have heard, that Supergirl has now changed uh, networks to the CW. So, we already saw the, the crossover, didn't we, between The Flash and Supergirl, and the issue is, of course, it's a different universe, but because it's on the same network now, crossovers will be easier. They have to explain somehow that how the universe is going to work and how can they transfer between the universes a bit better, but I can see more crossovers and it's already been basically promised that that's going to happen. It looks like there's even going to be an all four series crossover, which sounds a bit mental, but <laughs> you know, I want to see what it's like, of course. And I'll also tell you when they are back on air. Now these are US dates, I don't know when they come out in the UK or whatever. I'm sure you'll watch them legally, so here are the dates uh, for American at least. So Arrow returns on... October 5th. The Flash returns on October 4th. I don't know why they've listed that next. That's not very good order, is it? Supergirl is back on October 13th. And Legends of Tomorrow is on October 13th. So that's like almost every day of the week there's going to be a DC show showing. So is that overkill? I don't know. It might be a little bit overkill, to be honest. The thing I'm not super psyched about is there's Superman and Supergirl now. And it's kind of like stealing the thunder a bit because it makes everyone think, oh, but well, it's about Superman and it's not. He should be in there as briefly as he has been in the first season. It's probably about ratings. They're trying to get some more audience in, so they introduce Superman, of course. Um, but I don't. I think they should have left it alone. It's supposed to be Supergirl. Oh, it looks like there might be a crossover between Supergirl and Flash, which is a musical episode. So that'll be fun. <laughs> now the producer Greg Belanti, um, he does the Arrowverse, and obviously we'll do the rest of them now. Um, said something quite interesting which makes no sense really. He said the difficulty is going to be tackling how they change universes between Supergirl and Crossover, which is fine, that makes sense, but also how they tackle the Superman thing and the fact that he's not been mentioned once yet in any of the other shows that he exists. Now I did a rant before where I talked about the Flash and Supergirl crossover and I said it doesn't make sense that Barry didn't say, oh you're a Kryptonian, yeah we've got Superman in our universe. He didn't know what the Kryptonian was, didn't know what Supergirl was, anything like that. He'd never heard of any of them. Which is, you know, partly fine because they might not exist in his universe. But then why did Rip say this? I've seen Men of Steel die and Dark Knights fall. Men of Steel, Men of Steel, Men of Steel... So according to Greg, the producer of these shows, he's, you know, Superman's never been mentioned before. I think this was episode either 1 or 2 of Legends of Tomorrow. How can you forget that? He quite clearly says Men of Steel. He means Superman. He must do. And then he says Dark Knights and he means Batman. So we know in the Arrowverse, which is a different universe to Supergirl, that Batman and Superman exist. So what were they thinking? They, they've cocked it up, haven't they? The only thing I can think of is, as it is present in you know Arrowverse and The Flash, they haven't been introduced to Superman yet. Whereas, of course, Rip's from the future, so in his future, they have. And 
that is going to happen soon with these crossovers. They're soon going to know that there's a Superman and maybe he'll come over to the Arrowverse now and again and then that's where Rip's seen him and if that's the case that's fine and that makes up for it but it's just a bit concerning that the producer said that he's never mentioned before in any of the DC shows when he has. So like, how do you not know that? Mm. Man still. So yeah, enough ranting about that. I thought we'd take a look at a game trailer. Now this game's a little bit different from uh, some games you may well know or expecting this year or whatever. And it's called Orwell and it's, um, and of course Orwell wrote, you know, was it 1984? Big Brother basically. And it's about you're spying on things to work out what's happened or something like that. But I thought we'd take a look at the trailer. So yeah, this is Orwell keeping an eye on you announcement trailer. Play! Funny cats. <laughs> Thanks to the government's safety bill, the nation is experiencing the lowest levels of violent crime in years. But there are still those who pose a threat to our peaceful citizens. Those bastards. To all of us. Introducing Orwell. A new security program that combines cutting-edge information retrieval with human-directed suspect profiling. Cool. For Orwell to be truly successful, however, we need you, someone outside of the nation, capable Sandra of discerning Watergate. information posted by suspects online. You will have to carefully decide what information is crucial for our investigations. Mm. Stakes are high and lives hang in the balance. Sign up now, and together, we can ensure a safer nation for all. Orwell, <laughs> keeping an eye on you. Hmm, just watching what everyone's doing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. People do this kind of thing for a living in real life. What I said. So yeah, that looks pretty cool. Uh, depending on how much it is, I'll probably check that out. Quite interesting, those sort of games where it's, you know, you delving deeper into things and you're going down the rabbit hole and yeah, there's been a few of these types of games around recently or in the last few years where you are controlling things like that and, and the display is very much like that, you know, it's like you're at a PC, it's like a simulation, but you know, you're, you're doing actions to find out clues and all that kind of stuff. It reminds me of um, alternate reality gaming if you've ever heard of it, where there'll be like puzzles in like pictures like steganography or you know cryptology that you've got to work out and all this kind of stuff. Um, reminds me a bit like that and I, I used to really like playing those. They were you know text or website based. This is a proper interface by the looks of it. Um, but yeah I think I'll check that out actually it looks pretty cool. So that about do it I think guys. As ever, please click like if you like that, click subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you on the next video. And until then, remember, if you've got a webcam which is facing you, make sure it's off when you're not using it, because you don't know who's watching you, and you might see something they don't, you don't really want them to see. Do you know what I mean? Bye! Guys, if you're still here, you're awesome! Uh, but as you are still here, why not check out some of my other videos? Oh, and if you haven't already, please click subscribe. Laters, haters.